you're joking. Not another one? No! No! The Laughing Cavalier here, presenting to you another tale of these troubled times. And it's another unscripted video with a few notes. Uh, many, actually, in fact, when it comes to a uh, certain series from Netflix, which we will get onto momentarily. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, obviously, it's been a little while since I've done one of these, um, due to various reasons that um, I think most people are aware of. I'll link the um, post discussing it, but hopefully I'm trying to get back on track a bit now with um, video editing. I was hoping to have a preview of Tudor Rat 5 done uh, before uh, the new year, but sadly, I think that will have to be in the spring. But in the meantime, unfortunately, all the upcoming Tudor dramas have really built up. Because <laughs> I initially put it off for a bit because there was basically nothing happened. And then now there's... God, there's so many that are coming out and it's frightening. <laughs> really frightening. And the first one we'll talk about is one that's actually already released. Um, nearly a month ago now, I think it was at the time of recording this. And that's Blood, Sex and Royalty. What is this series? And nobody knows. I don't even know even after I've watched it. I, could, I can't even remember watching it. Was it a dream? I don't know. <laughs> it was absolutely dreadful. But let's begin. So, I had absolutely no idea they were doing the series until the trailer came out in October, I think it was about a month before the series released. And it was a, a docudrama series by the uh, most accurate of um, producers, Netflix. Um, <laughs> and it was, as the name suggests, it's, well, I say blood, sex, and royalty. It's a bit um, deceiving because there was basically no blood in it. I mean, Anne's execution is right at the end, but you don't see anything. Uh, I guess there's sex in it, technically. And uh, royalty, technically royalty, but they don't really act like royalty. So I'll try and go over to my notes, actually, because I was a little, um, how shall I put this, annoyed as I was, I was watching the series uh, for a variety of reasons. First off is the style of it. What is the style, you're asking? Well, the, the creators of the series at Netflix came up with a novel idea. Instead of having, you know, a decent period drama, how about we just get every crappy costume from every bad Tudor drama in the past several years, stick it on our actors, and we'll get them to talk like modern-day people. Cowabunga, dudes. Except it, doesn't, it sounds like, an ex like a stereotype of the modern-day dialogue, shall we say, because this is like Steve Buscemi with his backwards baseball cap and his two skateboards coming in, you know, this is the attitude. I'll give you uh, just a few snippets of dialogue. Or should I? Hmm. Well, wait a minute. I'd actually better introduce it, really, because I haven't explained the concept of it. So, apparently, this is going to be a series of dramas. This was just season one. There's only three episodes. The are docudrama, so there's a bunch of acting, about three quarters of the series, with actors doing drama scenes. And the remaining quarter is uh, some historians they've hired to talk about it. But they, they come across more like Troy McClure, in that one Simpsons episode where, I think it's one where Lisa turns a vegetarian and he's trying to, skin is playing a video to try and encourage her to eat meat, and it's just like... <laughs> just ask this scientician. Uh, he'll tell you that in nature, one creature invariably eats another to survive. So yeah, it's basically like that. <laughs> the historians are okay, I'm just, I'm just a bit annoyed with them really that they were in this schlock, and I don't know how much money they must... They, like, if, what would I do with this if you pay me enough money? I don't know. I'd have to pay a hell of a lot, like millions, I think, to do this. And even then, I think I would still hope I have some dignity left. We've got to have money. And the main problem, really, though, is just the acting part, which is three quarters of it. And I do hate this trend, because this is the thing that started back in about 2015, I think. There was a BBC series. No, very funny. It was the Channel 5 series first, actually. It was almost like the run up to the Anne Boleyn series in some way, like the trial run, because uh, I think Dan Jones was in that, and he also helped write Anne Boleyn. I'll flash up a, a um, thumbnail from an extract of it on screen I've often complained about. I, I, I think you'll get the idea of why I have problems with that version. Then the BBC did one with... Um, oh, God, I forget who it was on the top of my head. Lucy Worsley, that's it. That one was a bit better. Like, at least the actors, you know, I got the, some of the actors of the cast look a bit more like the people, and the costumes look a little better, somewhat. <laughs> but it was just a bit pointless, though, with that one, because they spend so much time on hypothetical drama scenes that are just eating at a time that the historians could be talking, telling you the actual truth, or even the, the drama itself. So, for example, that Lucy Worsley series, there's a scene where they have when Catherine is practising her execution, and it goes about five minutes of her, like, walking around the block and doing things, and it's just... And then they don't have the execution scene, because they couldn't afford it, obviously, because it was a cheap drama from the BBC, effectively. I thought that had finally died off after those two or three, but Amazon have brought it back, although I think actually the BBC did, because they did a Amberlynn one last year, which I haven't seen, but... I don't know. I, I assume that one's at least better than this. <laughs> at least with those ones, though, the actors are sort of trying to speak like actual 
somewhat, not necessarily period, you know, it's not years and years, but feels right. Dialogue in this one includes such bangers as um, a geek chic goddess, as Anne Boleyn referring to uh, Margaret and the Var, I believe. She was not like any of the other girls. That's a quote about, I think, about Anne Boleyn. <laughs> God, what other notes we got here? So what? I'm grounded. That's when she's um, <laughs> uh, stuck at Heaver Castle. I'll flash up a few more because um, I'd have to trawl through. But how many pages did I write? Uh, six pages of notes, so <laughs> you have to take my word on this. Uh, but the concept of it, like I said, season one is meant to be focusing just on Anne Boleyn and Henry VIII. They've said they're probably going to do other series, which frightens me. Initially, said it was just going to be the British monarchy as well. British, you know what I mean, like English, Scottish, and then later British monarchs. I've now heard they might possibly be expanding it to others. I don't know. I hope they don't. I hope that they cancel it. And it's meant to be about Anne Boleyn, so it starts off well. It's mainly told in like her in the tower retelling it all. A bit deceiving. They say this is the testimony of Anne Boleyn. Um, none of this actually is. <laughs> I don't think there's any testimony for her talking about the field of the cloth of gold when she's in the Tower of London. So it's a little bit deceiving, sticking that on your thing, Netflix, but hey-ho. So the dialogue is crap. The costumes are crap. They are literally recycled from the Spanish princess. I'll flash a few up on screen right now. There's the headband thing she wears. That's one that um, Mary Tudor wears in that series. There's a costume I think Lady Worcester wears in this Anne Boleyn series that Catherine of Aragon wore in the Spanish princess. So they just raided all the cheap ones. They, and then not only that, they were so cheap... They just reuse footage from the Tudors for certain scenes. Because I was watching this, like, hang on a minute, that that bit of the fill of the cloth of gold, that's the Tudors. It's like, and it is. I'll steal it! No one will ever know! Now you can say, oh, come on, Cavalier, you use footage in your thing. It's like, yeah, but I'm a, I'm a little YouTuber with, like, 6,000 subs. Uh, oh, by the way, thank you, everyone. I'm, I think I'm at 6,600 now, so... Um, and it's time recording. This is a couple of weeks after the fifth anniversary of my Cromwell review, so... We're doing well, but... Anyway, but as you know, I'm a YouTuber, and I'm using little clips to, you know, to review them, and I'm talking about them. Netflix, don't you have money to, I don't know, record this maybe? Or you could have your own CGI department? Like At least, like, you know, the Spanish princess did their own stuff, you know, I'll give them that. They didn't just nick it from the Tudors. And then the bits they do film, they went and filmed it in Lithuania for some reason. I believe it's Lithuania. And the architecture there does not look English at all. You can clearly look at it and it's like, that looks very Eastern European, sort of, you know, the terms of the castles and the architecture does not look very English or Western or European, shall we say. You know, because most castles in England at this point are still going to be very medieval looking and a sort of bit more grace and so on. There's going to be red brick Tudor, you know, mansions. The only, the only one they do, they do actually film at Heaver Castle briefly, and that's about it. <laughs> so I don't know whether that was just it was cheaper to film out there. You'll forgive me if I'm rambling a little bit because it's difficult to put into words how much I hated this series. In fact, I think in my notes at one point I was threatening to get in the time machine go back and kill George Washington to prevent the United States from existing. So Netflix would not have a home to exist. This might seem radical to people, but I think this is a quite moderate position to have, really, I feel. Anyway, not the worst part of it really is the acting. It's god-awful. <laughs> I... Because I'm... As I'm middle of editing to around five, and I feel like... Was I too hard on it, really? Was I really hard? You know, was I too hard? Like, this is... I'll try and play some clips if I can. We get where the copyright here. It's not stellar. I mean, the highest. Um, it's not really an all-star cast either. The, the the most notable the people they got is Amy James Kelly as Anne Boleyn, who was in Coronation Street, and Matthew Parker, I believe his name is. Um, I wrote it down somewhere. Where is it? Max Parker, beg pardon. Uh, who was from Emmerdale. So, and that's it. That's the highest rank we've got, basically. I swear to God, it's like we're getting a lot of like Coronation Street and Emmerdale people in period dramas lately. Has that become like the the pipeline? You start off in Emmerdale and Coronation Street, then you move up to sort of Tudor drama, and then you're on to maybe Hollywood, hopefully. <laughs> and yes, this uh, you'll forgive me for struggling. I just I'm I'm at a loss for words. It's one of those things that once you've experienced it, you you it's like shell shock. You just don't want to really live it again. <laughs> um, in terms of accuracy. Again, you could argue it's sort of accurate, I guess. I mean, you do get the broad strokes of, you know, he married Anne Boleyn, <laughs> he chopped her head off and so on. But there's bits in here that do perpetuate a few old things. So, for example, Jane Boleyn is yet again thrown under the bus and they just say, um, you know, she was a scheming woman behind the scenes, which has been challenged. It's not a new thing. This has been like for over a decade now, the stories of challenges. So that we could have gone to a bit of a debate about that, but no. Now, whether that's the fault of the historians or the, the makers of the program dictating this, the funny thing is sometimes it doesn't even match what the historians are saying on the screen because they were talking about, like, Henry marrying Anne Boleyn in secret, which he did initially. And the bit they got on screen is them coming out of a church with church bells ringing and people throwing flowers and stuff. It's like, that's not, that's not secret. That's, <laughs> that's the opposite of secret, really. <laughs> 
Oh god, yes, the rap music. I forgot. Oh, that just re that was a memory I repressed, and it just come back. Oh, it's got rap music in it. Somebody, I didn't even know. Somebody pointed out they reuse um, music from like The Sims Medieval. Netflix, do you not? Did you run out of money or something like doing on a Cowboy Bebop, which you cancelled after one season? <laughs> Just fucking hilarious. Or do you spend it all on Stranger Things or whatever shows you're doing at the minute? Because it's like, was this just an afterthought? You're like, hmm, we want to cash in on the Tudor drama thing. We'll, we'll very quickly throw this together and just shit it out, and that's it. I'm fed up of talking about this now. I don't know if I'll even make a video on it. I want to actually make a video one day about Tudor drama documentaries, like the aforementioned ones, like with the Lucy Worsley one and the Previous Channel 5 one, and, and this probably. So I might do a, a bit like my Tudor rant series. I might do like a rant series on that someday, but we'll see. I'm going to try and repress memories of this until then. So I'll try and... I better get through, because there's a lot to get through here. I'm already about 12 minutes into recording. <laughs> um, I better mention Becoming Elizabeth. Um, obviously, you've, um, go watch my quick review if you want my full opinions on it. But we'll briefly mention, of course, um, something I didn't know at the time I was recording, and I put bits of it in when I was editing, but we do know now uh, it's been cancelled. We're not getting a season two. Uh, and some people were, you know, say, oh, my, maybe they might switch to another network. We're like, no, it's 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 dead, as far as I'm aware. Annie Reese, she's, um, as far as I'm aware, she's now focusing on a, you know, stage stuff again, So, which is a thing, like, when you're a director, you can't just commit to a project and they might, may or may not come back. So, yeah, it's dead. <laughs> I have mixed views on this. On the one hand, we had some absolutely terrible parts of this series that, again, I'm going to do a quick review. But on the other hand, we were past most of that. You know, Thomas Seymour is dead, thankfully. Okay, they've ruined Catherine Parr, but she is now dead. They can't ruin her again unless they bring her back in a flashback. There's not going to be a problem that Alicia von Rittberg isn't the most inspiring of Elizabeth, so let's be honest. But we were getting to Lady Jane Grey, we were on the verge of greatness. Yeah, Bella Ramsey is, was good Jane. Uh, Romola Garai, I think I pronounced that right. I mispronounced it in the in the one of the earlier videos, and then I heard it in another one, and then I heard another one say it was Romola Gary, so Garai or Gary or however you pronounce it. She was good Mary. I think they would have done the Nine Days pretty well. I think particularly like Jane's execution, for example, because I mean they did um, some ex execution quite well in in the in the series. So I think Jane part of that would have been quite good. I think uh, Annie Reese has said on Twitter that they would at least. Looks like it would have gone up to the end of Mary's reign because she, she would have mentioned she mentioned Calais, so we were going to go up to like the siege of Calais and prefer presumably would have had some of the Dudleys you know fighting that. Cause I think one of them didn't one of them die fighting in the in the Low Countries in the war against uh, the French, I think. So yeah, there was some good stuff that was upcoming and it's gone now. Like of all the Tudor bow treated dramas we've had to cover, like at least this one had the potential to reform, shall we say, with some tweaking. And I think you know it comes to the fact that she went to. Annie Reese, you know, she went into this not with a background of knowing much about the period, but she has now done a bit more. So I, th I, I would have been willing to give them a bit more the benefit of the doubt, I think, but we're not going to get it now. Interesting fact. Now, the officially the reason why Stars cancelled this was the low ratings. Interesting fact, though, the Serpent Queen, which I'm not covering because it looks terrible. I've, some people say, oh, it's funny, it's an irreverent sort of comedy and things, but I'm, I'm sick to the back teeth of irreverent comedy where they do these sort of things isn't it i feel like it's a bit of an excuse really just to get away with whatever but anyway that will be here all day if i rant about that and the costumes and that so i've seen some of the costumes i'm not a big fan of zippers in 16th century period dramas anyway that series has been renewed for season two the ratings are barely any better though it's about you know most of them they are a little bit better don't get me wrong but it's not much and actually compared to spanish princess they're both quite lower the reason for this, though, I think, is primarily because of the thing that happened, that I bet I'll say the name of out loud. <laughs> Everyone started streaming. All the channels, because, you know, all the cinemas were closed down, and so they just did everything on streaming, and that's now diluted it so much, people just aren't watching it anymore. And that's, I think, massive impact to stars, that they're now having to cut back so much. And I think I think it was doomed the minute this happened, because... Uh, there's an interview with one of the directors here, and he talks about the, the cost of making it. And you've got to remember, this one they put a bit more money and effort into with the costumes and so on, so it's already a bit pricier. I'll provide the link to this interview. This is the one uh, director who directed the middle of the series. They had three directors. Chadwick did the early uh, chunk, and then there were two other directors. And uh, what's the chap's name? I'll, I'll just have a quick look. Udian Prasad. He talks about here about how they set aside a substantial budget to deal with any curveballs that the, the thing threw at the production. Some people did get the thing, and when that happened, it had quite an impact. But without the systems that had been put in place, the results would have been disastrous. 
I had a case where an actor cast specifically for my block and who had tested negative five times prior to their first shoot day tested positive on that day. So you see some of the problems they were having. Like, I know it's a bit of a cheap excuse to say, oh, it was the thing did it, but like that would massively have increased the budget. And I, th- I think it was a matter of fact that they just don't have the money. <laughs> So they, they've had to make a choice to cut back heavily, and I think this is one of the casualties. I think it's less the viewing... I think that's just the official excuse. I think it's more the fact that they're just losing money making it, because that was something they didn't plan. Like, actually, had the thing not happened, I think this probably would have been renewed for another season. I mean, they didn't stop them renewing, you know, Spanish Princess, and actually viewing figures season two are quite low compared to season one. But again, I think that's actually due, as I was saying, to the fact that everybody was streaming, which I think diluted it quite a bit. And it doesn't help in the UK. Stars stuff isn't shown on any of the major channels. Um, you have to have an, a subscription to Amazon Prime, I think, and then a subscription to Stars, which is, you know, it's too much. You can't really do it. So, yeah, that's my theory is I think it was more the budget killed it, really. This, this is not to excuse the bad stuff in it. You know, definitely that would have impacted it. But, but yeah, so Becoming Elizabeth, uh, rest in peace. And the only thing is when we're not going to get, you know, the Bella Ramsey was like in the perfect position to play a good Jane. We had Rommel Garai, the perfect Mary, and that's gone, unless the BBC decides to do a series about Jane, maybe that would... Please, please do, I beg of you. (music) Fortunately, we do know one thing the BBC is doing is Wolf Hall, which I remember years ago I did a video, that was just before the thing happened, and it has now officially, officially, officially been confirmed they are going to do a season two. Uh, Some of that was prompted by um, the recent death of Hilary Mantel, which I think came to a shock to a lot of us, and they have now confirmed they are going to do it in her honour. Um, I did miss an article, though, back in March of this year, Mark Rylance gave an interview, and he confirmed, even back then, that he had already seen the early scripts, and there would be six episodes, much like season one. That does actually slightly concern me a bit, because season one was covering two books, which is Wolf Hall and Bringing Up the Bodies, I think it is. This season is just covering The Mirror and the Light, which is the last book, which released relatively recently. How are they, are they going to be able to stretch that across six episodes? Because we're going to be covering, you know, it literally starts not long after Anne's execution, so 1536, we're going to have all the stuff of the Pilgrimage of Grace, and then it's going all the way up to 1540 and Cromwell downfall and execution. Whereas season one covers, you know, everything from, what, roughly sort of mid-1520s, sort of the te- you know, beginning when Cromwell is in the service of Wolsey, and then the Great Matter and so on, which is very dramatic, you know, and that's just all crammed in one season. This is going to be a bit stretched out, I feel, which is worrying me a little. And obviously another thing, in fact, is Hilary Mantel has now passed away. Um, and the director himself, I think, has come out and said, you know, this, this is now the period when she would be checking it a bit more, but that input is now lost, sadly. Nevertheless, the BBC, you know, is definitely in, it's definitely, you know, a shadow of what it was, say, in the 70s, I'd argue, when they're producing some of the best ones like Elizabeth R. But I, I have some hope we might get something relatively decent if we just pray. <laughs> Promise we're not going to see this for a few years, though, because as I mentioned, the aforementioned The Thing has massively impacted budget, so they're probably going to be cutting back on a lot of stuff. Last I heard, they were in the final stages of script writing, which that could, st- and they've then got to do all, you know, getting the cast together and sorting out schedules. At the absolute earliest, maybe late 2023, they might start filming. That is being very optimistic, though. I think it'll be 2024, they'll film it, and it'll be released about 2025. But I'll keep an eye on it, and we'll see. And now we have, um, I better cover another one. Onto the- <laughs> I told you there was a lot to cover. Uh, Firebrand. Not much news about Firebrand, really. It's been very highly secretive for some reason. More than Becoming Elizabeth, which was pretty secretive at the time, which, again, I think a lot of that was due to, again, the aforementioned, you know, the, the thing and <laughs> the budget and so on. But this one also was filmed partly during, um, or more at the, you know, I think it was more or less cleared up by then. But the last, all we know is that it was filmed from April to June of this year, relatively, which is quite a narrow time frame. Like, usually things like, say, you know, Becoming Elizabeth took six months to film. Although, again, this is just a movie, so perhaps, you know. And it was filmed at Haddon Hall, um, as I mentioned, from April to June. It's due to be released in 2023, and that's it. <laughs> we don't know much else. There's no behind-the-scenes pictures, apart from a couple of very grainy shots of Alicia Vikander in costume as Catherine Parr, taken really from a distance. And young actress uh, Junia Reese, who's playing uh, Elizabeth, posted a couple of bits on Instagram and social media that have leaked out and and I think there was um, one of the local papers Jude Law went to go and get a burger or something and some local burger van was like oh look it's Jude Law you know, he's playing Henry VIII in it and that's literally it that's the only picture we got of this production they're being highly secretive we do know one thing um, Alicia Vikander did say in an interview that he Henry VIII is going to be wearing like a proper sort of fat suit almost to look bulkier 
Initially, I heard it reportedly wasn't, which was annoying me because I'm like, oh god, like this is this is Henry VIII in about 1546. This is towards the end of his reign when he is, you know, quite unhealthy and uh, so on. But it looks like they are going to be somewhat authentic looking. The director gave a really weird interview though, where he, um, I put some quotes up on screen. I haven't got the link to hand, but he was talking something about like colonialism or something, and like it's an utterly bizarre interview. I hope I hope that's just him rambling on and that's not actually going to be in the movie because that would be a bit weird because we're about half a century before you know at the earliest what sort of 1580s and even then like the first permanent colonies in don't english colonies don't survive till the stuart period you know the 1600s you know all the the ones the elizabethan times more or less failed but yeah other than that so not much known i do have some worries i've heard some discussion of the the source material has got some controversial parts in it Hopefully we're not going to get that. I've had enough with becoming Elizabeth with that portrayal of Thomas Seymour. I don't want a rerun of that, please. Fingers crossed it'll be all right. And I think that's about your lot. Yes, yeah, so again, we've got to keep an eye out for Wolf Hall and Firebrand. Depending when I get this video done, we'll we'll see, and I'll keep an eye on them. Um, I was hoping to do another video on the Napoleon series as well, but I think I'm going to rate, um, wait until the trailer comes out now, because that's due out next year as well. So we're going to have a quite busy year. I'm going to have to sort of pick up the work ethic a bit, I think, because I've been been lacking a bit but uh, but yeah so anyway uh this has been the laughing cavalier wishing you a good day